Hello there. I am Peter Strömberg, also known as PES. I am a big closure fan. I'm at the beginning of my closure journey and I'm very much learning it still. And with this video, I'm going to try to get you interested as well. So, closure is a lisp, and many regard lisp as being like an academic uh, branch of languages, but that is not at all the case with closure. It is a super practical language. It's used uh, in lots of real world projects out there. It's hosted on the Java virtual machine, so it reaches the whole uh, uh, Java e e ecosystem and it has fantastic uh, Java interop. So uh, you, it's really, really easy to, to uh, use anything in Java from closure. There are also ports of uh, uh, closure to the common language runtime, run and also actually I learned the other day to the Erlang VM. There is also closure script, which um, by the sound of it might sound like Java and JavaScript, but it's much more tight uh, than that. So closure script and closure, they are almost the same language. In fact, most of the libraries and many libraries uh, for closure and closure script are written for both uh, platforms and uh, with common code so it's there's some s special extension you use for that to CL CL CLJC uh, for it so they, it's very similar languages but of course since ClojureScript is hosted on the uh, JavaScript uh, VM you have an enormous reach you can reach everywhere where you know, JS reaches and with tools like React Native which make it easy to, to, to reach the um, mobile phones as well as the web and also Electron apps. Uh, this makes us ask, can we do, can we reach all that with ClojureScript? And the answer is yes, we can. Actually, um, ClojureScript and React Native love each other. So, and uh, you will find some links then in, in the description, uh, uh, one of them to this site where you can read a bit more about uh, uh, how, how these two fit uh, uh, together and how to use it. We are going to use uh, the easiest uh, path, I would say, to to uh, uh, to React Native, which is Expo. And of course, Expo is uh, is a lot, but for the purpose of this demo, uh, it's helping us with packaging and bundling the JavaScript. So so we will be using Shadow JS for for compiling. Closure script to JavaScript, and then uh, Expo using the Metro Bundler will package uh, that JS together with other React Native JS to to build the app. And it will also help us load uh, the app on the different devices and simulators. And we're also using Shadow CLS, which I just said it's compiling the Closure script to to, uh, to JavaScript. And it does do in a fantastic way. It's really easy to configure, and it it also makes it really really easy to reach uh, the JavaScript ecosystem, like Node, npm, all that stuff, uh, as well as the Closure ecosystem. So it's uh, it actually gives you a bigger reach than you give with vanilla JS, right? And it also supports this hot reloading, which was like pioneered within closure script uh, in a way with, uh, but it's it's still way ahead of the competition uh, when it comes to hot reloading and library loading. Lots of this library loading, it's not keeping state and it's slow and everything like that. But with uh, Shadow Shell JS, it's super fast, super efficient, and it keeps your state, keeps you all all times effective as a, as a developer and also shadow uh, gives us access to the closures or closure script REPL here and I'm gonna dwell a bit around the uh, REPL a bit because that's part of the uh, experience uh, here uh, so it's uh, uh, it's it's a bit like any REPL a readable eval a print loop uh, like in, you have in Python and on or the JavaScript console, stuff like that. But it's also much, much more than that. It gives you a way to 
to be hooked in to the running app. The REPL is actually part of the running app. And you can, through it, you can inspect the app and you can modify the app, redefine it. Uh, and uh, that's how you develop stuff a lot when, when you develop with Clojure and Clojure Script. We call it interactive programming. And the uh, IDEs uh, use this REPL to, to get a lot of the REPL power up to the developer. Um, so that's super, super nice. We are also going to use Reagent. So that's uh, a closure script library wrapper, if you like, for React. It's uh, it's really really nice. Makes it super easy to define React components. Easier, I think, than it is uh, with uh, with native JSX and React stuff actually. So it's uh, it's super. So here you see the definition of a simple component. It's it's simple, right? And we're also going to use Reframe, which is an event subscription model for managing application state. Uh, uh, it's fantastic. It's a super nice uh, and reasonable way to think about state uh, in your application. And they have written excellently about it on this uh, site. So I really recommend you read this. Regardless if you're going to use Closure Script or Reframe or anything that I'm going to show you today, you will not regret reading this because this is uh, like, yeah, it's one of the best reads you can have, I promise you. So let's get into it here. And remember that I'm going to try to get you interested in the development experience here. I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to teach you Closure Script. You're going to see some Closure Script, and you will not have any problems following along if you know some other programming language. But there's. It's not focused really here on on, on learning Closure Script. I just wanted to, you to have a feel for the development experience. And for this, uh, I have packed together um, an example project in this repository here. Again, you will find links in the description. And this uh, project uh, packs together everything you need to 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 get started. You you'll need Java installed. That's all. Otherwise, re the rest is is here packed into this. And it will, it will will not require you to install anything globally. It's, everything is is uh, kept inside this project. So it promises us to get started with. Uh, React Native using CyberSailJS in three minutes. So let's see if uh, that's really is the case. We can start with downloading the zip. Yeah, it's, it's here. And then we unzip it. Like that, and I'm going to open this up in my favorite editor, which is uh, Visual Studio Code. So you have it here, and let's see what the what the README told us more about this. Then, so <laughs> it says that we should. Um, do npm install and then we should jack in using Calva that will compile uh, uh, the closure script to uh, to JavaScript and then we will start to build up so we will start expo for us and here we say we can run it in the web browser we, we will try to run it in in, uh, in the Android emulator first okay. and then it promises us to give us access to this REPL that I'm talking about. So let's see about that. Uh, npm install. Well, this will take a while. As I said, it uh, it has all you need for, for following along here for doing this. Okay, it's, it has uh, Shadow CJS. Uh, it installs Expo and the Expo <coughs> command line interface and everything for uh, for you. And this is the application uh, we will 
we are waiting for here. So here you can see this is how it looks like when you uh, when you uh, uh, require something from npm uh, uh, using shadow cell yes, and this is uh, required from from closure script then. And this is uh, the sub styles, and then this is the actual. Uh, view that's uh, going to to show us. So it's a view, and in the view we have a, a text showing uh, the result of the subscription on the on the counter, and it has a button that asks us to press it, and it will dispatch an increment of, of this of this counter. We will look a bit more about that later, and it has an image and another text. Okay, so npm is finished with some audit uh, reports, but we will not care about that uh, today. We will just continue like we didn't see it. And next thing then was to to uh, uh, jack in with Calvin that will start Hello Orange Shadow, and that will start uh, Shadow CLJS in watch mode, and then. Uh, it, that will compile the uh, the, the closed script to, to JavaScript and wait for us to to uh, load the app somewhere. We will load it in the Android M later, as I said. And uh, then when it's when it's loaded in 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 the emulator, we will be able to connect to it uh, uh, using then actually Calva here, which is the ID I'm using for uh, for closed script. Uh, is uh, is going to automatically give a success uh, to the REPL and connect us. So it's compiling the app here. Maybe we could we could uh, make it a bit. I'm keeping things tiny here so that you should. Uh, now I didn't see when it's finished, right? So it's see if this is done yeah it's done it's uh, completed the, uh, the build and that means we can uh, start the, the the build task then run the build task and that will start expo and open the uh, expo uh, ui for us in the web browser and from here we can then uh, run it on different uh, devices so uh, let's run it on the Android emulator then it for us and it should start the Expo app will which will then load the JavaScript it's the compile closure script to JavaScript and also the, uh, the other JavaScript stuff from react native and there we have the app I don't know if we made a three minute mark but uh, let's see if it works then yeah so if I click here we have our cookie clicker, sort of. So that's uh, uh, how you get. So now, uh, as I said, uh, this README here promised us that we should have access uh, to the REPL. And we will see, see about that. So now the application should be running. And uh, we will. Yes, either that a bit. Uh, see here. So it it told us that we could uh, do a JavaScript alert actually. So let's see if we can do that. This is common in in closure code. You write a comment, which is a macro if you like, that it actually ignores everything that's in it. So uh, so when uh, the closure reader reads this file, it won't it, it won't actually. Uh, uh, evaluate the stuff inside the comment block. So there you can put your experimentation code. It's also called rich comments from the creator of Closure, Rich Hickey. So let's see here. We do. That doesn't look good though. Let's we'll see what happens. Yeah, so then you have the alert here in. Uh, 
in the emulator then. So let's see if we can make it a bit smaller. Move this a bit herewards. So yeah, so you see it when I resized it, it didn't like that. So I minimize it and open it again. So it should still be working. Uh, so when we have the uh, application here, we have uh, we have conne uh, connection to the REPL, which is actually running inside here. So uh, so that's why when we evaluate this, uh, it. Uh, it will show the alert uh, in here, which also means that we can we can use this uh, uh, for doing anything like we can add up some numbers. Uh, yeah. So if you want to help with that, you can do all, all kinds of an experiment uh, with the closure script uh, runtime and and the application. So uh, you can inspect the uh, the app, as I said, and we can do in when you're using Reframe, we can inspect the the application state using these subscriptions. So this text here is actually a concatenation of this word "clicked" and this uh, the result of this sub subscription. So that sets is it's twelve here. So if we evaluate uh, this inside here, it should answer twelve, right? So that's what the counter is, and if we do that again, we'll see that we can inspect the uh, inspect the state, and we can also uh, we can also use a reframe to to um, uh, dispatch uh, uh, these events and and change the state. Then, so we can do the same thing that's up 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 there. Then, and we can fire this event and you can see here that it's instead of clicking if you like so that's uh, that's the REPL but you also have hot reload uh, from from uh, shadow sales which can so you can m modify the app like in two ways you can you can reevaluate it in the REPL or and or you can save the file and get it hot hot reloaded and then mod and then the resulting new application will be injected uh, uh, into the running application and replace it without replacing the state but there is a bit of a war going on here uh, with different hot uh, hot reloading and live reloading so expo uh, actually has both it has live reload, which is like a regular browser reload. So it's really it's 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 slow and it's uh, it of course kills all the state. But it also has something called hot reload, which is more like shadows. It's it's um, it, it it keeps state. But neither of those really work well together with shadows, and neither of those actually are as good as shadows is. But when working with this, sometimes they, they are like a bit of a bore with each other. So one thing that I've noticed is that uh, sometimes uh, the, the um, uh, even though it says it's not enabled here, it will, it will uh, uh, still be doing the old live reload. So if, let's see if that actually is the case. We can just change the label there. And then you see that shadow updates here. Yeah, and we don't get that extra uh, live reload. That's good. So let's change this back then. So here you see the live reload happening. And you see also that it keeps keeps the state here. So you can just imagine that it's like a much more compli complex state that is hard to get back to. But even if you have 30 there, it might be like if you need 30 there, you need 30 clicks to get back to that state, but not so with this hot reload. And you can see that we still are able to do that through the REPL. And 
let's see then if we can do something a bit more interesting. So see here we dispatch this ink counter event and that is um, defined here in the events uh, file and it's uh, it's defined here. So the way that reframe uh, ha event handlers work is that they have a name and then uh, th it's a function which takes the current application state called db uh, as, as an argument and then some optional arguments and then it returns a new database it's since this is closure we're not uh, we're not actually um, um, mutating anything we're, we're we're creating new and and don't worry about that the closure does it in a super efficient way but anyway so this uh, this um, uh, function here it will update uh, uh, a value uh, so it will update uh, this value uh, which is like a map and it will use a function uh, uh, inside the map it will use this function uh, so it will use this to to look up where inside the map it should up and, uh, apply this function so it's it's um, it's how that's how it works. So, as we see now, if we dispatch this, it <coughs> it increases. So, because this function ink here, the, that's what I that does. But if we change that to decrease, and now I will reevaluate this <coughs> in using the REPL. I'm not saving the file, so it's not hot reloading now. It's just doing it through the REPL, modifying the app as I told you. And then now, when I've clicked this, it should actually count down, right? So that's what's, uh, what's happening here. Uh, so uh, let's say then that we think that's a bit uh, where we want we want we want to, to increase more. Let's say we want to increase more. So we have <coughs> we have a, instead a more counter, right? We're not satisfied with just one ink here. Uh, we want uh, we wanted to do it five times. <laughs> so this this event handler more counter. If when that's dispatched, it should it should update this counter. Uh, five times every time you, you you dispatch it. So let's see if we can dispatch it here. So again, again, a command block. Uh, it's, uh, to s you can also work at the prompt here, but I usually use the command blocks instead. So let's require uh, re reframe core here, and uh, let's see. Will use this form of it so that I can alias it to RF. Uh, and there, now it's required, and we can start using it. And then I can dispatch. So this is reframe dispatch, and I will dispatch this more counter now instead. So if I do that, you will see it increases this by five every time and if I if I dispatch that old boring ink counter that will only oh it's still uh, decreasing actually so we should uh, uh, load this definition into the REPL that's what I'm doing now uh, I still haven't saved this file, uh, so uh, uh, it's only happening like in 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 the application as such. It's not the code under it that has changed. But now, if I do this, yeah, we go back up again here, and here the more counter is is more is more, right? Okay, so now I will um, I will um, let's say we wanna 
button for this more thing then. So uh, now we will show you some hot reloading instead. So the button is here. It's this touchable capacity which on press dis dispatches on this encounter. So you I will then make a new button that says uh, it counts more and it will dispatch this one. And now to get this that's actually appear here I will need in this case to use hot reloadings. I will save the file and that will give me this new button. This state is still there and I can then use it to count more than this one does. So uh, one thing to note now is that I haven't at, le at least I think I didn't uh, uh, I didn't save this I don't know how yeah something unsaved here yeah so the event uh, file here is it's not saved so these this new this new d uh, dispatch uh, event for the more counter is uh, it's not uh, actually out there in, in, in the code, as I said. It's just modify in the app that's running in this phone. So that will be uh, important in a, uh, in a minute. Because what I'm going to do now is that we're going to uh, load the same application in the iOS simulator. So there. And it will also need to download uh, this bundle, which could take a bit time, but yeah, fast enough, right? So I'd saved this view file with which we had. So we see this button here, and we also see this button here. And this button does the same as it did before, but this button, right? It's not. We get an error here. Reframe. We don't have this this event handler. Uh, register for the more counter. So, uh, how do we get that in? Yes, we use the hot, uh, the hot reloading. So that means we need to go into this file here and save it. And you see it flashed a bit there, so now it's loaded. So now we can. Oops, no, nope, actually, you saw you saw two things there. Uh, th I was talking about right before. It's this war of the reloads. So that was this old live reload of uh, the Expo app that, did, that is, even though uh, we don't have fast refresh uh, enabled, it still did this uh, reload. So I uh, found a way to do that. If you, if you enable fast refresh and then you disable it, then you get, and then, then it is actually disabled. And then you can uh, use these buttons to get you some state and then you can let's go to the app here and uh, you can start modifying uh, the app without it getting uh, uh, getting reloaded so that's good to know and okay so here we have the app running in both of, of, of these and as you can see they have their own separate state, so it it has this um, uh, this one has its counter and this one has its its own counter, and also the REPL is only really attached to the la last one that we are uh, that we have. So if we if we uh, let's see if we can arrange it so you can see both here, yeah. So if we dispatch this counter, you see it's only. It's only this one that uh, that gets uh, updated. So let's see, let's see if we can do something more, just to show you the the hot uh, reloading uh, going on and how fast it is. So there you see, we have a yellow. Uh, well, I don't think we like that. So we have changed it back to to uh, white. But maybe maybe you, you want. Uh,
it laid, laid out like that. So you see it happening here and both of these are keeping their state. And uh, let's uh, see here. Uh, I think I promised you to show you how this is happening on the web, uh, building a, w a web application for us as well. So let's go here and we run this in the web browser. And that's usually quicker than starting it in on the emulators. So there it is. And you see it has this space around still uh, that we have. And it has these two things that we have modified in. And let's see here. We can... Hmm, uh, yeah. Sorry, this looks a bit ugly, but now we see it at least. And one thing with with the web uh, version of it uh, that I haven't found a way to to get rid of is that it still it it keeps uh, doing this uh, reloading. I think it's Webpack that does it. I don't know how to disable it actually. So you have only have this hot reload re uh, without this. Ex you have the hot reload in the web app. But you, you have this extra uh, expo library load, which is uh, not as fun. Then. So if we change the, the background color here to, uh, say, red, then you see that it's hot reloads them all. And then the web uh, version here is, is uh, library load as well. We can maybe see that easier if we have. So now we have the state here is 136 on the counter, here is 35, here is 24. And we change back to say white here. And hot reload. The hot reload happens almost immediately, but then unfortunately this one uh, gets reloaded and uh, the state is destroyed. So if anyone knows how to disable that, uh, I would be really happy to know. Yes. So I think that actually what I told you in the beginning here that I would show you how you can work interactively uh, uh, with uh, developing the app for all these platforms at the same time, as you see. So I can you know, change my mind about colors and can really redefine the app, keeping the state mostly, uh, at least on the phones. And <coughs> and this way of of doing it via the the, the REPL where you can uh, inspect the state and modify the uh, the application um, uh, and modify the state of the application doing everything from within your your uh, your um, oops, editor here I mean it's super super effective and a fun way to 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 program I would say so I think that means we're we're done and uh, I think also this would be where I should say please like and subscribe and don't forget the bell uh, to get uh, notified and uh, yeah you will again you will find uh, some links to a resource, the resource I've shown you uh, in the description thank you very much for watching I really appreciate it